The Wars of the Roses was a conflict that deeply divided England between the Plantagenet houses of York and Lancaster. The two factions believed they should be ruling over the country, and a number of devastating battles saw hundreds of thousands killed and injured. Eventually, the Wars of the Roses culminated in one of England's most infamous and notorious kings being slain in bloody fashion on Bosworth Battlefield. Richard III's death was incredibly bloody, with him being defeated by Henry Tudor, which began the Tudor dynasty, the ruling family that famously Henry VIII, Bloody Mary and Elizabeth I belonged to. However, before this, there was a Lancastrian king who was defeated and overthrown by Edward IV, and this king reigned for a significantly long period of time. Henry VI is one of only two men, including Edward, to have had two reigns on the throne, but in 1471, he was allegedly murdered inside of the Tower of London, in devastating fashion. He was, after all, a king, in his own right, and the murder of a king is a shocking event. So join us today as we look at the brutal death of Henry VI, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Henry VI was the last Lancastrian to rule England. He was king twice from 1422 to 1461, and then for a year in 1470, before being kept off the throne for good. He was born on the 6th of December 1421 at Windsor Castle. His father was a valiant and brilliant King Henry V, the man who defeated the French spectacularly at Agincourt during the 100 Years' War. Henry VI was the youngest person, and still is, to ever come onto the throne and to succeed, but was officially crowned in 1429. He was even named the King of France in 1431, after his father's victories and successes in the 100 Years' War, but as was normal, he would not rule solely until he was old enough, and in the meantime a Regency Council oversaw the two nations. He married Margaret of Anjou in 1445, and was noted to have been a very religious man, but a king who put his faith in the wrong people and advisers. Power struggles often occurred at his court, and he found it incredibly difficult to oversee England, let alone rule over France too, and this stressful situation caused great strain on Henry. Things got worse with Joan of Arc's success and reputation causing significant damage to the English in France, and in 1450 Normandy was lost, which led to many in England to question their own king. Because of successive failings in France, the king was driven to a nervous breakdown, which occurred in 1453, and during this time, Richard the Duke of York was named the Protector of England. It took the king two years to recover, but during this time, there had been a great divide emerge in the country. Civil war broke out in England, dividing the nation between the Lancastrian and Yorkist factions. This saw the protector, the Duke of York, fighting against the king, and in particular Henry's queen, who commanded the Lancastrian efforts. In 1460, the Duke of York was slain in the Battle of Wakefield, but then his son took up arms in the fight for the crown, and he heavily defeated Henry VI's forces at the Battle of Toton, which was described as the bloodiest battle ever fought on English soil. Edward then claimed the throne after the battle, and crowned himself King Edward IV. Henry VI fled and went into exile, but later returned a year later, and was captured by Edward. During his capture he was then later paraded throughout London, with his feet tied to a horse, and he wore a straw hat proclaiming him to be a rebel. This caused great humiliation for the man who ruled over England for decades. But Henry would be returned to the throne, as at the turn of the 1470s, an incredibly powerful medieval noble would switch his alliance from York to Lancaster. The Earl of Warwick, known as the Kingmaker, switched, turning on the new king Edward IV. He was seen as the most powerful man in England, and the true power behind the Wars of the Roses. He then managed to restore Henry VI onto the throne, in 1470, and Edward himself was forced into exile. He later returned a year later, and laid waste to the Lancastrians, in the Battle of Tewkesbury in May 1471. This battle in particular was noted for heavy losses of Henry VI's forces, and his only son was also killed. Edward the Prince of Wales was at one point the successor, but he was killed at the age of 17, on the battlefield. Edward IV, who then retook the crown, threw Henry into prison, sensing how dangerous it was having him around. He was thrown into not just a normal prison, he was imprisoned at the Tower of London, a place that today is synonymous with torture, execution 
and brutality. The Tower, after all, is a place where three queens lost their heads, but what is less known is that it was a place where at least one king also died. It was said that when the royal party, presumably Edward IV, arrived in London, they were informed that Henry VI was dead. Official chronicles and documents from the time state how the deposed king passed away in the evening of the 21st of May, 1471. It's considered that Henry's enemies kept him alive for a while, as they feared his son more as a ruler, and that it was favoured having the weaker Henry, as it was favoured having the weaker Henry as the head of the Lancastrian forces, as he was doing more damage to his country, and his son would have been a better king. According to the history of the arrival of Edward IV, an official chronicle biased towards Edward, it was said that Henry VI died of pure displeasure and melancholy upon hearing the news of the Battle of Tewkesbury and his son's death. However, this can't be really believed, as sources close to Edward would not specifically say that Edward ordered the king's death or had Henry VI killed, as at the time kings were believed to have been sent by God to rule. If Edward had in fact ordered Henry's death, then he could have been seen to have offended God and to be nothing more than a murderous usurper. But the believed story of Henry VI's death and passing is much more brutal and savage than that. There have been a few people who have been blamed for the death of Henry VI, and one of them is the notorious King Richard III. Richard, who was the Duke of Gloucester at the time, has been blamed for the death of Henry. Sir Thomas More, the Tudor advisor to Henry VIII, stated Richard killed Henry, but it's believed that this was done as a way to portray Richard, the enemy of the Tudor dynasty, as a murderous and barbaric individual. It's believed, though, that Richard was away from London at the time of Henry's death, and also that it was just 18 when he died. It's believed that Henry was murdered, and although in some accounts a specific murder is not named, it was said that Edward IV must have given the order for the death of his prized prisoner inside of the Tower of London. Having Henry VI alive ultimately was dangerous for Edward, and by ordering the death of him, he was extinguishing and exterminating the direct line of the House of Lancaster with ruthlessness. The belief about Henry VI's death is that on the night of the 21st of May 1471, on the night of the Vigil of the Ascension, Henry was praying inside his chapel in his prison. He was being held inside of the Wakefield Tower, one of the oldest parts of the Tower of London, which was built in the 13th century. Whilst on his knees praying, someone came up behind him and stabbed the former king to death using a dagger or a sword. So whilst Henry VI was most vulnerable, an opportunistic assassin went up behind him, murdered him in cold blood, and ended the life of a man who had reigned over the country. Henry's body was originally buried inside of Chertsey Abbey, but his body was later moved to St George's Chapel inside Windsor Castle by Richard III. Allegedly, Henry's body was exhumed in 1910, and when the bones were analysed, it was said he was a 5 feet 9 inches tall. His light hair was also said to have been covered in blood, which is interesting as for over 400 years it remained preserved, and his skull had a significant amount of damage. This put beyond doubt rumours that the king simply died from melancholy, and in fact met a very bloody end. Henry VI's murder and death is considered a forgotten moment in English history, but it was a king born onto the throne. His reign is seen as a poisoned chalice, as Henry being the king of France and England could do nothing to juggle the thrones. He was plagued by poor judgement and by a civil war that split England and caused immense brutality and changed the face of history forever. His murderer has been lost to time, but what is certain is the fact he had a very violent death inside one of history's most famous prisons. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you for watching.